Joshua chapter 2, um, verse 1. Say amen if you're there. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out to Shidem two men to spy secretly, saying, go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now I will take license that most of you know this story. And I'll just use that as our lead text. And if you'll place your Bibles down, we're going to pray. But I will get into more of this. And uh, I'm going to say some things today that's going to cause some of you to think a little bit. And I want to do that because I, I feel that if so, you're, you're, you've gotten too secure with your salvation that you don't realize you've become indifferent to his presence. Jesus, we love you. We need you, Lord. I'm but clay. Pray that you would help me move your word skillfully, led by your spirit and your unction, Lord, carefully. We thank you for your, your being a magnificent, almighty, soul-saving God. We need your presence today, God, for all those listening online and will listen in the future. And for all those within the sound of my voice right now, God, we ask you, lead and guide us, Lord. We must be saved. And Lord, we got to be in the right house before you come in Jesus name everybody said amen amen God bless you you can be seated I want to speak for a few moments about the harlot's house the harlot's house Joshua chapter 6 14 through 17 it said in the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp so they did six days and it came to pass on the seventh day that they arose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times, and it came to pass on the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. <laughs> Verse 17, and the city shall be accursed. <laughs> you ever get in a situation you think everything's lost? Even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab, the harlot, shall live. Sister Denise, I like these things where God will do something with someone you won't even talk to. And she, and listen to this part, and all that are in the house. The city's condemned, but there's this place of safety. Brother Jonathan, the harlot's house. We serve a holy God. Yes, we do. But his place of refuge was a harlot's house. And she and all that are in her house because she hid the messengers that was sent. Really to talk about this and to get into the subject and give it contrast. I have to use the word Past. The past is having existed in a time before the present. Something at an earlier time, something done, gone by, elapsed in time. Many people struggle all their lives to overcome their past. In fact, the past, your history, can sometimes place a death grip on you. Regardless of the things that come and go and maybe the blessings that come, I've seen people blessed still stuck. <laughs> you're blessed, but you're bound. <laughs> you're prosperous, but you're in a prison. In fact, I, I hear it even today. Some live that continuing thought of if only, 
They are so earthbound that the only opportunities they look for are the world's. Oh, I've done this. I've done that. Oh, life would be different. Can't imagine if I'd have. Many are stuck. If I could only have just stopped doing, you put whatever in parentheses there. And so in order to try to bring about some change in our thinking, in our heart, in our lives, to maybe let go of some things that aren't as important as we've made them. I'm going to focus on a harlot today. Yeah. The prostitute. The woman named Rahab. A woman who, well, according to her moniker, had made some bad choices. <laughs> Every one of us have. Don't nod now and ignore me later, please. God hates sin, but loves everyone. Je Jesus demonstrated this concept with, with the woman caught in adultery. Guilty. In the act. Brought her straight to Jesus. I don't know what he wrote in the sand. and may, may, Maybe where you're at in life, maybe God would have you to gander considering your condition, what he would have written in the sand to you. God doesn't save your life to pour it into hobbies. He, he saved your life to pour it into him. Please hear that. Because God clearly wants to save us. And when Jesus lifted himself up in, in, in John chapter 8, 10, 11, and saw none but the woman, you got a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus today. If God grants you tomorrow and you wake up, you still have that opportunity. But know this, there's a day when judgment and deliverance collide. This is that day for the adulterous woman because judgment had her to rights. And they thought they were taking her to be condemned, but they brought her to the very one that could bring deliverance. <laughs> they brought it in the wrong place. Some of you, some of you can sit in here and want judgment on someone you know something about, but you want a deliverance when it was your turn. The old saying, we forget where we come from, is more true than we realize. It's a shame that the amount of self-righteousness that gets into the house of God. When we get to that place where we think we've earned or we've or we've 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 aspired, we've done something, and we forget to be very giving or rich towards God, and we 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 become measured to God when He's been immeasurable to us. Are you hearing me? And here's this lady. When Jesus had lifted himself up, he saw none but the woman. He said to her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? How many of you have lived? past those accusers. It's been too long to bring that up. Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, no man. Lord. I would say Lord. If he's not your Lord, you might be condemned. See, if you're your own Lord now, well, we read Matthew 18. I'll leave that one there for you. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. See, because that's just it right there. Where, does, where are you at in God? Not where you were 10 years ago. Today. And he tells her. It's easy to read through this because we're so enamored with what just happened. But he gave her some pretty clear instructions. That's your past. Now go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. God clearly wants to save us. He wants to save people. 
And that means helping us change our minds and our lives to eliminate the sin factor and join the right side and make it very clear whose side we're on, who's on the Lord's side today. Most people write you off if you've had a past. Most people won't get over your past. But God looks at this situation in a different way than man. The choices of the past are not nearly as important as the choices that you make today. (laughs) The great city of Jericho was to be conquered before Israel could inherit the promised land. Been hearing about this promised land for many years. They were stuck for many years. I know people that have been stuck for many years and don't realize that your stuckness will also keep you out of the promised land until you get the mentality and the ideology and your spirituality correct. Just just because you're in in the proximity doesn't mean you're in the promised land. Now they they, they were going to inherit it, but they had to actually do some things properly to keep it. Two spies sent by Joshua to spy out Jericho at some point came to Rahab's house, who was a harlot. Now, <clears throat> that's kind of an odd place for two people of God to show up. What were they doing at a harlot's house? House full of folks with uh, questionable past conduct. But for some reason, in God's economy, he didn't choose the rich man's house. He chose the harlot's house. He didn't go to the community center. He didn't decide to go rent a room over here at the hotel. He chose a place full of people with questionable paths. People coming and going. The harlot's house. I know it doesn't sound like it, but for some reason, for the sake of our message today, it sounds like a good place to start a church. Well, I know some of you forget the verse and such for some of you. Because at your lowest, God said, well, this is a good place to start a church. You see, too many of you associate the church with the building. And yes, we have a building, and he has come in for a church. But you have to understand it's you. You have to ask yourself... If you can't hear his voice right now, are you going to hear his voice when he comes? God is not afraid of conflict. You see, our problem with us today is is the American church is bought into comfort. We don't want comfort. We don't want we don't want prayer time. We want good scheduled church with soft seats. We can't even be, we can't even be accountable for five. But at the end of service, watch there'll be the certain same people every service that'll have to go to the bathroom because they don't want to avoid the altar call because the altar call invites a conflict. Commitment and conflict bother some people because then it causes you to stop having the image of a walk with God and having to actually have an actual walk with God. So God is allowing this whole thing to transpire. He's not afraid of the conflict of a harlot's house. God knew this was coming. Leaves a whole lot of room for gossip. People would use your imagination and make up all sorts of wild stories about this. Evil imaginations. It's amazing to me. I had a situation where, where someone of completely no reputation called me into question, and I watched the people who knew me decide to take that person's word and and, and research me. And I sat back and I realized I'm learning more about those researching me than what they thought they were learning about me. I found out those that were stuck on gossip, those that didn't have a walk with God, those that really weren't sensitive to the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit of God, and more, we're more concerned about past than present. You know, I know we don't like to talk about stuff like this because it's where rubber meets the road, and some of us don't want to face the reality. We're not as spiritual as we pretend to be. We're not as churchy as we like people to think we are. We're really not 
what our image says. People always look at the dark side of things and expect the worst. Thank God there's always the light of truth. Thank God that despite how ugly things are, the fact that judgment is coming, there's a plan for deliverance. You need to hear me. I have not left the story. There's a scarlet thread of God's love waiting for you to grab a hold of throughout that, the word of God that leads to the right house. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. These two spies were hiding in a harlot's house hiding with information, hiding in what turned out to be a house of hope. The whole city of Jericho was so wicked that perhaps the harlot's house was the only safe place to hide. Rahab was aware enough to realize who they were and reached out. She wanted something different. What are you reaching for today? What are you reaching for? What When you get up tomorrow, what's the first thing you're going to reach for? When you get up Tuesday, by the end of the week next week, what will it be that you reached for and made important? You, listen, you can't deny the reality of the truth. Look at your finances. Look at your time. Break it down and ask yourself, was there time that you prayed? Was there a real time that you read the word in full intention of wanting to know the Lord? When you Are you reaching out for him? Remember what this lady said. She made a statement to these spies. For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. What? We got a harlot recognizing the power of the holy God. We got a harlot recognizing the people of God. It's sad to know that a harlot, a harlot can go all in and recognize. And we have saints of God that are sitting back in the house of God. Well, we got people that are in the, in the throes of being the worst people in society can recognize a move of God. They can recognize the people of God. And yet we got the people of God who are pretending to be the people of God. And sad that we can have people faking going all in and we have a brand new convert going all in. I tell you what, it's something to find a lady willing to put herself at risk. Step out and be doing it, doing anything and everything they can. What, what, what do I need to do? I'll hide you. I'll risk my family. I'm going to keep you from the king. I'm going to provide for it. I'm going to do anything for God. And then you find the self-righteous sitting around the church looking around like a statue. Full of doubt. Full of fear. Full of unbelief. Listen, you, 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 you really can't hide from God what you really are. And it's sad when we have people that, that call on the name of Jesus, claim the name of Jesus, and, and, and at some point, I guess, have the Holy Ghost, but they don't know what it means to go all in anymore. The scriptures indicate that Ray, Rahab was convinced. Oh, oh that... that that when we look at one another, we'd realize, I can tell they're convinced. I got two. That was cute. Because I, I've been around long enough. Some of you, you better get reconvinced. And listen, this lady practiced a wicked profession. Don't, don't get it wrong here. But in the fact that she had these issues going on, she still believed in the God of Israel. Oh, man, God, that someone would get that today. Some of you are so busy judging the wickedness and some of you don't realize they're wicked, but they believe. You say you, you're self-righteous, but you don't. 
You ain't done it. You're not. When's the last time you actually walked to this altar and repented? Repent it. Re repentance isn't something you do once. It's a lifestyle. It's a recognition. I'm not where I could be in you, God. I repent. Help me today. Uh, because if you're always doing what you've always done, then you haven't changed to be like Jesus. Oh, boy, I slipped that one in there, didn't I? I changed the ending on that one. She heard the news of how Israel had defeated all those other cities and the power of God was moving. And evidently, uh, her conscience bothered her. She knew she wasn't living right. When's the last time you allowed the presence of God to convict your conscience? To go, you know, judgment's coming. Am I really ready? Am I really alert? She knew the time was short. She heard the stories of this holy God and his holy people. Rahab was changing her life because she knew God's judgment was coming. And she was looking for somebody that represented him. And in a city full of debauchery, there were just two. And she found them. When you're searching, you'll find. When you seek, it'll be there. And if it's two needles and a haystack. God will help you find it. God, let me help you with something. You don't quit. Quit asking God to move. You move. Get off your backside. Get off your pride. Get off your lack of prayer. Get off your lack of Bible. Get off that opinion. Get off your carnality. Seek the face of God with your whole heart. Here is this prostitute changing her life. Because she knew judgment was coming. Can I, can I throw this in? I'm glad the spies dis, didn't disappoint her. Are we disappointing to the lost? Is your walk with God disappointing to... Because I... I, I <laughs> We need, we need to live up to the name. Oh, there are holy rollers over there. When's the last time you actually rolled holy? When's the last time you actually, ah, oh, oh, there ain't nothing like the things of God. There ain't nothing like the things of God. There's nothing like the power of the Holy. Ain't nothing like, man, I, I'm all about that. I'm all in. I, I don't want to disappoint those looking at my life. I don't want to disappoint the, hey, you online, I don't want to disappoint you and be some sermonizing preacher. I want to let you know the Holy Ghost and fire is still alive and well. You can repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, be, receive the Holy Ghost, evidence be in the tongues, and get on fire. You can be delivered here. You can be saved here. You can feel the power of God here. I got two. I got two. Oh, we got two spies. Oh, hallelujah. Are you sure that the people that you're used to seeing aren't checking you out? Are you sure they haven't been watching you? Are you sure that maybe members of your own family why, why, why would I give up all my, my movies and all the entertainment? I get to see you get on fire for God. You talk about them now and then, but I've never seen you excited. Huh? In fact, I see you more involved in your hobbies than him. I see you more involved. In fact, I've heard more out of your mouth critical of the church than I've ever heard you praising God. I wonder if we've disappointed those watching. It stings a little bit, don't it? I wonder, I wonder, how, how, how are we doing? Sweet lady, I don't think I could make it without your prayers, but how are we doing? Brother Davenport, we call ourselves men, how are we really doing? Sister Davenport. Come on. Oh, no, 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 we don't. Oh, no, you're making me uncomfortable in the house. I'd rather be uncomfortable and get the answers to this question right now than wait till, wait till the walls fall and there ain't no chance. 
Come on. Maybe it's time some of us realize if God can move in a harlot's house, you need to start letting him move in yours. Maybe you ought to get off the harlot's problem and start dealing with your own. Maybe you ought to realize he may be a harlot, but you've been dragged out a little God by your hobbies. Does your life declare he's coming soon? Does your life declare that you need to get in the right house? This lady was able to see the signs. She was able to see something coming, and she's looking for God's people. Her life, wait a minute, her life was a mess. I don't know that you can get messier than this. Can you imagine someone that deep in sin had her eyes opened? And we could be sitting here blind right now. Come on. Come on. Your conscience is seared. Your eyes are blind. Oh, God. Open my eyes. Help me see what you see. God, here's my heart. Here's my mind. Look at me. Cleanse me with this. Creating me a right spirit. Renewing me a right spirit. Creating me a clean heart. Let me, let me push you away from some of the things that I always do. Because I haven't heard in a long time that clarion voice and call of God. How is it that a harlot can see the impending doom? And here we are, we see the sign of the times. And I hear people say, the politics are bad, the world is bad, our kids are going crazy, the schools are nuts, we got pandemics, and we got truckers, and we got politicians now, we got all sorts of chaos, and yet you're in the house of God sitting down on your blessed assurance, and you look more like a statue than a saint of God. Time was running out for Jericho, just like time is running out for this world. And if a harlot could get right, where should we be right now? If a harlot could find it, wait a minute, I better find myself right with God. How can we sit here? How can I sit here indifferent and watch my friends and my family and my babies and my grandbabies go to hell because I'm indifferent? The judgment of God was coming. Jericho was going to fall. And this harlot makes a declaration for the Lord. Your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth. When's the last time you made that declaration? When's the last time you found yourself called? That's it. I'm all in on this thing. I'm tired of the things di diluting me. I'm it may not be sin, but if it dilutes me, if it makes me, if people looking at me don't see God in me, if people watching me can't see worship, if, if people with problems can't see my prayer, if I'm not viewed at like this lady saw the, oh, what a confession, what a comment, what a declaration. Would to God we had more confessions like this today and our evil, all that people would walk in. God, you are God, and you are God alone. What right? We had a group go knock doors yesterday, am I right? How many of you went to find Rahab's house? Well, they don't want God. I, I, I even had some in this room. I, I, I'd go door knocking if I knew someone would open the door to me. What a whim. I, I'd go teach Bible study if I knew they wanted. There's no faith. But you have to realize Rahab. Listen, 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 listen. Wanted to be spared. She didn't have the right, but it's what she wanted. That's powerful. Because don't make, see, that's the problem. Some of you, you think you've been around long enough, you got the right. 
and you've lost the one. And your self-righteousness is full of you and you're no longer concerned about God. Really? Listen, she wanted without the right. She wanted to escape the wrath of God and the wrath of God was coming because of the likes of her and her deeds. Is that as far as the east is from the west as you can get right there? This, this kind of transformation <laughs> that we're seeing right here in this second chapter of the book of Joshua, the Israelites are finally entering Canaan to claim their promised land. The first city they would have to face was the great walled city of Jericho. If they could take this city, they would easily split the country. They move on to conquer the north and the south. But before they get out the business of defeating Jericho, Joshua sends spies to gauge the mood. I think Jesus sent some folks out. It's pretty good that if, if he can send you out, you can hear him and he'll be able to call you in. So if you don't have the sending out part, it's in question if you're going to get the entering in part. Anybody here feel the call to go be a witness? Anybody here still feel the call that you? You know, the sight of men entering a harlot's home would not attract too much attention. Well, Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody, but I just some folks roll their eyes. Oh, nobody think nothing of it. But if it's Brother Joe and Brother Christian. <laughs> Y'all in trouble. I'll see you in the office. Right. But what they found when they entered the home, Rahab, probably came as a pretty good shock to these two men. God likes to orchestrate things that will turn you on your head. There's going to be some of you that are, you're so self-righteous, God's going to do stuff right in front of you. You won't recognize it because you're going to think nothing but bad. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. All everything you say, they're this, they're that. Like those people that were trying to, man, it, it blew my mind how they spoke to me and talked to me about finding out about me. And I sat back there, I'm learning more about you two. I'm learning a whole lot about you two. I can love you, but don't forget my position in God. Don't forget you have a walk with God that you're accountable to. It, it says a whole lot more about those throwing the stones than for whom they're intended. See, because when these spies met Rahab, she wasn't the girl they thought she was. In fact, she wasn't the girl anybody thought she was. They didn't know what was going on in her home, but something was going on in her home. Something was going on in her life. Something happened. They could see her past, but they didn't know there was going to be a future. You see, everybody in that city was locked down. Everybody knew what was coming. Everybody knew the power. In fact, they said this, the heart of the whole city had melted. They'd given up, and they're waiting to die. But Harlot said, uh-uh, the devil is a liar. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find me. A, I'm going to join the right team. I'm going to switch sides. You see, for us, Rahab is the picture of the power of God. Rahab is the ability that God can transform a life that comes to him in faith. Hey, you two spies. I Okay, I don't mean to get down there. She probably knew most of the men in that city. She was used to looking for the new ones. New money. I know that's too much for some of y'all. But she realized, oh, no, 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 no. I know what I'm looking for. Hey. Yeah. 
See, what we're seeing here is how the Lord can take a sinner who will place their faith in him and allow him to change them by his power, by his grace, by his mercy, and ultimately by his deliverance. But I'm speaking about this morning. If you'll save, then rejoice that a great change that Jesus made in your life. But don't sit there dead like you never needed him. When it's time to worship, um, if you've been around a long time, you ought to be the greatest worshiper here. Oh, if you know, see the problem is some of us, we've been doing it so long, we think we got ourselves here. Oh, no, 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 don't understand. I, I've been doing this a little bit now. I, I, oh, I kind of made my way here. I'm thankful for the change Jesus made in my life. Because the change that he did those years ago is the same change I need today, and I need to make sure it's still happening. I need to make sure he's still first. I, I can love my family and love everybody around me, but I'm not good to anyone, and they're not going to see what they need to see if I'm not putting him first. If, I'm, if they're not turning around and watching me sacrifice and watching me praise and watching me worship, and not just seeing me going to church faithfully because that's what I do, and you bought into the culture of who you are, but you're honest, you're at that place, you'll sacrifice, you're praying, your house echoes with the sound of prayer and Bible study and Bible reading. It's not something you talk about, it's something you are an enemy. And when they look at you, they're like, they're different. I want what they got. I want out of this world, and I want what they got. And if you're not committed, if you're not there, let, let, let the Lord speak to your heart this morning. Because Rahab was doing the same thing we all need to do today. And with many of the words that he testified and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized in the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. She said, give me a token. What? Well, you don't think she's making a deal? She's probably the best deal maker in town. But she wanted a token of truth. She wanted a token of assurance, token of hope, assurance that she's going to be included on the Lord's side with God's people. You stop and think about this situation. They didn't have time to stop and explain the Passover. Well, Rahab, we had to put blood on the doorposts and we had. Yeah. You know, they didn't have time to explain all that. He said, You know this scarlet thread? What you let us down with is going. You see, there's a scarlet thread that's weaved throughout the whole Bible. You need to leave this hanging out your window. Mm -hmm. What? What are you talking? That? That's it? You see, it really wasn't about how grand it was, but more about how obedient she was. You see, some of us are so, and I'm going to use this word again and again, I've become so self-righteous, we no longer think we need to be obedient. Because we think that's kindergarten. Oh, repentance is never kindergarten. Repentance is the door. So she didn't have time to get it all figured out. She didn't have time to dig out all the, you know, you don't need to know everything about God and get it on, know every theological I said, Jesus, exit Jesus, understanding of the scripture. She just knew, you know what? I don't want to be a part of my group. I want to be a part of your group, God. <laughs> and the simple token was you leave that scarlet thread. Rope. She didn't have anything to lose but everything to gain. By her faith and obedience to the word of the spies, walked over there and hung that ridiculous rope out the window and tied it off. Now, I don't know. I, I'm not a prof I, I'm not. You, you won't find someone better at tying down trailers and loads than Brother Davenport. You, you're not going to. If, if, if you want some that you could tie, do 360s and Brody's from here to New York and his state, he's your man. I ain't got that. So when I tie those things off like you're supposed to, I put an extra knot in that bad boy. I, don't know. I make it to where I can barely get that thing in it because I don't trust my, I don't trust me. 
Now, I don't know about Rahab. I don't know how she was when she tied that thing off. But I know I'd have gone over to that when I said, okay, yeah, I got that out and I'm, I'm going to put it up. <laughs> I'm going to, hey, Joker ain't going to come steal my robe. <laughs> ain't that, no one's going to, hey, I, I can imagine me the next day I'd run over there and be checking that knot. Anybody ever tie down a load and get out and get in gas? You check them knots. <laughs> I can imagine what was hanging on the line here. She's checking in knots. Hey, there's a lot riding on this. I know it's simple. I know it don't seem like much, but I'm going to make sure my focus is on what's important. And some of us uh, have diminished the church. Well, that's okay. And you got all these other things going on in your life and you don't realize you've lost focus. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what it did. But when she was told, all right, you get in there and whoever's in your house will be saved. She cre- There's a sticky moment created there. Because imagine when the cry of alarm went out. Rahab's over at mom and dad's house. Um, I know you haven't seen me in a while, but you know what's coming down the road for us. You're going to need to be in my house. Ah, uh, sweetheart, we love you, but we're not coming to your house. Um, why don't you just come out? Oh, no, no, that's not how it's going to work. You see, I, I've worked out something with this spot. You need to come. What are we going to look like if we go there? What are we going to look like if we go to their church? <laughs> look where they've been. Oh, what a oh. Now, I need you to get your stuff, mom and dad, and come to my house. I'll be right back. i got to go talk to my brother. Hey, brother, what are you doing here? Ah, I come to get you. You come to get me. Oh, you leave me out of your business. No, you need need to come to my house. There is a difference between our houses, and I know yours has a better reputation than mine, but mine's still the house of safety. Can you imagine? She goes to her family. She goes to her mom or dad or whoever. You got to be in my house. What? Wait, wait. We've avoided your house your whole life. We've avoided that place. Well, the reputation that's there. Uh, we can't come to your house. Uh, 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 Erica goes to your house. Sister Verdala, Brother Lawrence, and Brother, 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 brother Davenport. I can't go to that house. The reputation ain't good. <laughs> you don't understand the army of Israel is down the road and they're coming and God's given them the city but I got a promise because I met some of the real real deal for I met some and I'm in league with them I made a deal with them we can get the same benefits that we can if we're in my house <laughs> and somehow some way Sorry about that. I got to let him go like this. I really can't even fathom Sister Peaches how she convinced them to come to her house. But if you read, she got some people in there. Thank God for people that won't give up. Have you given up knocking on doors? Have you? You could hear the sound of doors being nailed shut, windows being boarded, people preparing for a battle. All they could feel was the subtle rumble of a marching army silently marching around their city, marching in silence. Pretty sure as she watched them go around the first day, she checked that rope. 
she checked it. The British told her whole family, don't worry, just stay in the house, stay in the house. Stay in the house. Just, just don't worry, don't, don't, just stay in the house. Why, why do you keep going and check that rope? Well, just, just, just trust me, this scarlet thread means a whole lot more than you realize. Don't, don't, don't use it to the thing. You stay right in here and let the, let the scarlet thread do the talking. <laughs> her, friend, her friends, her family, all those who did room were dependent on that simple scarlet thread of agreement. A yet powerful agreement. I'm sure she secured her family in the house and was waiting like the rest of them. You think about that a minute. A harlot telling her family, you need to be in my house to be saved. You need to be in my house to be delivered. See, because I don't care how bad the city gets. I don't care how bad the world gets. God will have a house of safety. There will be a house with his blood on the doorpost. There, there, there will be just like a church in the last days and a harlot's house in a doomed city. God will have a place of escape for those that love him. He, 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 you, you better be in the right house when he comes because deliverance depends on whose house you're in. Luke 14 says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. I, 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 I wonder if some of you are ready to get about your father's business. And I know you have your house, but it's this house he's coming for. Now I'm going to lay a revelation on you and I want you to think about this and let this sink deep. Because I've heard it for years and I've never had a real response for it. And I've actually sometimes have thought it myself. You ever been around those folks, man, I'm not going to that church. Y'all got problems. I'm not going to that church. Brother Carl, Brother Lawrence go there. Man, that's two scoundrels. Up to no good. Isaiah goes there. I'm not going around that fool. What are you talking about? I'm not going to that church. That shyster, that swindler, that deal maker, I'm not going to that church. Every one of our names, someone probably looks, well, I wouldn't go there for nothing. I don't need the church. I got God my own way. I heard someone tell a story. I go out in the woods and get God. I don't find that in Scripture. It sounds good to me, though, Brother Terry, because I'll be honest with you. Y'all think this is a little weird, but I've been out on hunting trips before, and I got out there by myself. So I got my little Bible in there, and I just put hunting aside, put my bow aside, a bit of a little altar, and I had prayer time. Sounds good, but it ain't truth. Because if I took this hand, cut it off, and threw it over there, the hand dies. And you're a part of the body of Christ. You need to be in the right house. You need to be in the house. You need to be in the house. All that, see, careful what sounds good to you. Will lead, you're self-righteous, and it'll lead you in the wrong direction. Because you got to realize every one of her family that was in that house, every one of her friends that waited as that, as that, as that army marched around, will stand in judgment of all those folks who wouldn't darken the door of a church today. You see, because you can be saved in a harlot's house. America has stopped going to church. America has stopped going to church. People have stopped believing that you really need to go to church to be saved. But the Bible says he's, he's coming for his church. He, 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 a, a church where he bought with, purchased with his own blood. He said, and I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You have to understand, you better make sure you're in the right house. God will deliver a harlot and her family that obeyed and got in the house over those self-righteous folks who are too good to come to the church. God is still God regardless of the society and his problems. And he'll grab a harlot and help her become holy before he'll let some self-righteous person make it over their indignation because they're better than someone else. I wonder, can you picture the faith of this pagan woman with a past? Understand what was on the line here. These guys were marching around silently. You think you're caught up in entertainment. I don't know. They're just, they ain't doing nothing. They're just marching. 
They've been doing it for three days. They've been doing it for four days. Shh. Aren't you afraid of them? If that wall of Jericho remains, Rahab is nothing but a harlot. But if the wall comes down, she ends up in the lineage of the Messiah. Oh, maybe you missed that. You see, where's your faith? Well, God's delaying and is coming. I'm going to go get busy with this. God's delaying and is coming. I really don't need an altar. God's delaying and is coming. I don't really need to worship and sing and praise and say fervent about God. You know, Rahab wasn't brought up around godly worship. She was not instructed in Jehovah God of Israel. She, yet she surrendered in complete obedience. Some of us have had all the instruction and all the teaching and all the preaching and all the presence and all, and we sit indifferent in the house of God. Yet her and her family were huddled in the house for seven days as Israel marched silently around the walls of the city. And on the seventh day, they finally heard a strange noise. And it sounded like war and horns and all sorts and shouts of people. And those walls began to fall. And immediately, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, it all made sense. Why to get on fire and stay fervent on being obedient to what he said. I believe God looked down on that scene that day. He, did, he did, didn't just see that scarlet cord. He saw an amazing foreshadow of the shed blood of Christ and people being obedient to the simple words. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. Get in the house. Rahab and her family were saved that day because she placed all her faith in God. Listen, when you walk down God's hall of faith in Hebrews 11, names like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, you will find the harlot Rahab listed among the heroes of faith. Her name is placed along the greats. I stand. People are looking today. People are looking and needing a scarlet thread of the blood of Jesus. They're needing that lifeline for salvation. The, 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 how are they going to survive the, the, the crumbling of this world? How are they going to survive the disintegration of our society? How are they? How is our generation today going to make it when destruction's imminent? Yeah, I know. It's simple, kind of small. It, it might elude your vision if you're not looking for it. I wonder today, have you found that commitment? Are you convinced completely that when someone sees you, they know you know the way? Oh God, allow us to walk with that Blessed assurance, allow me to walk with that 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 token of salvation and that that of mercy and grace. That that when people see me, they realize. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I need I need to be hiding out, hiding out with you guys. Rahab is a story of hope for everyone. If if Rahab is the reason to pour ourselves into the things of God, despite all the clamor that you see going on, no. That if he's going to save the harlot's house, he's going to save his. You know, I know her name. Yeah, it's in the church hall of fame. But you know, he wasn't finished with just this. He wasn't finished with this little lady with a past. 
he did something completely out of the ordinary, something amazing. In fact, you find it in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. Verse five. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. She went from the house of shame. Not only found herself in the hall of fame, but she was in connection to the name above every name. She was David's great, great grandmother. She was the mother-in-law of Ruth. God took her from the gutter and made her eternally famous. I'm telling you, I don't care where you come from. It matters what you're getting into. Oh, he gave, he gave every one of us the opportunity to get into his plan. I guess it's a matter of what's important to you. The story I found, her name is Christina, but you could put any name you want there. Maybe it was Erica or Doris or Jessica, Verdell, Peaches, Denise, Joanne, Crystal, Deborah. But she became indifferent, unhappy with her home. Her mom could see the restlessness, begged her to stay, worked with her day in and day out to try to get her to understand the importance of being committed to what was right. One morning she woke up and walked into Christina's room and found her bed empty. Her mother Maria was devastated and she knew what had happened. The allure of the city had caused her to take her few belongings and flee for what everybody said was fun times. Maria wasted no time. She went down to Walgreens and got in the booth and took as many of those little pictures as she could of herself. Spent all her money except her bus fare to get to that city. Filled her purse with pictures of herself. On the back of every one of those, she wrote something. And she went around to every seedy part of town, every, every, every low-life hotel and motel and every little corner of the bus stops and any place, bars and nightclubs, any place with a reputation for street walkers and prostitutes. And everywhere she went, she would place a picture of herself and she'd tape it in corners and phone booths, hoping that her daughter might see one. Pretty soon the pictures and the money ran out. Maria made her way home. This weary mother wept as the bus began its journey back to the house. A few weeks later, as a worn out, despondent young Christina descended the stairs of a seedy hotel. Her young face was tired. Her brown eyes no longer danced with the joy of youth, but instead spoke of pain and fear. Her laughter was broken. Her dreams had become a nightmare. A thousand times over, she longed to trade this countless beds for that little bedroom pallet at home. Yet, that little town was in many ways too far away. She'd done too much. She'd gone too far. She caused too much damage and her embarrassment led to disparity. In despair, she reached the bottom of those stairs and was going to sit down when something caught her attention. 
She looked and saw a face that she recognized on the corner of the hotel lobby mirror. There was a small picture. She looked, it was her mother. She was shocked when she saw in place of a, a picture of her mother. What was her mother doing in a place like that? She plucked the picture off the mirror and her eyes burned, her throat tightened as she walked across the room. I don't know what compelled her, she don't know, but she turned that picture around to see the back and written on the back, whatever you've done, whatever you become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. She did. The same message is issued to every one of us here today. The same invitation, the same opportunity. No one has been left out of the invitation of God. If he could have a house of ill repute turned into the house of hope in a doomed city, I'm telling you right now, oh, maybe you think your, your sin is somehow different. But it's God's eyes that matter. Sin is sin. Forgiveness is forgiveness. And Jesus offers it to those who will receive it. I wonder today, as they begin to play, if you'll accept that personal invitation to come to this front and say, you know, Jesus, I, I've been a lot of things. I've been a lot of places. I've thought a lot of things. But God, I need you. I need you. Yeah, everybody else aside, I, I worry about them in a minute. But right now, God, I need to know that I'm all in and I'm convinced, God, that I'm going to be in the house of God all the days of my life. I wonder if someone will accept that invitation. To No, 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 no. Not now. You may have done it years ago, but today accept it again and say, no, no, Jesus, I'm still all in. I'm still all in.